they are trying to battle the big bang. It's next to impossible to explain what kind of organizational configuration CERN has. What kind of organizations achieve extraordinary things? Why don't they seem to fit the norm? When the discovery of the Higgs boson hit the headlines in mid-2012, it once again put the European Particle Physics Laboratory, CERN, in the spotlight of public imagination. As a layman, I would now say, I think we have it. The 27-kilometer ring, known as the Large Hadron Collider, had become a modern legend. Few knew how it worked, but everybody marvelled at its success. Less well-known are the four experiments which were the engine room of the new physics. And well hidden from the public glare is the unique organisational approach at CERN, which has made the Higgs discovery and other achievements possible. How organisations like CERN and its four big experiments succeed without a standard management structure will be a major theme at next year's SMS Special Conference by Lake Geneva. CERN fits well the description of an outlier organisation, built around a high degree of staff motivation towards a strong and an overarching goal. The other thing I've done, just to get an inkling into their culture, is I content analyze the interviews that I've done with, with Dr. Bertolucci, but also with other uh, distinguished members or coordinators of the Atlas experiments. They don't like to be called managers, or they, they are coordinators. They are there temporarily. It's by election. They come and they go. And the word that came out strongly, most strongly, um, was the word we. The notion of a professional in physics or engineering sits at the heart of a structure where leaders of the experiments are elected and decisions are made by winning arguments. The search for fundamental knowledge is not the only spur for an outlier. Aid organizations like Médecins Sans Frontières rely on a similar motivation amongst their medical and nursing staff. Like CERN, they are not driven by a need to make a profit and devolve a lot of authority to field staff. I would think probably uh, between 35 and 40,000 people that have arrived recently. I think these people actually have been displaced for a significant period of time, for up to two, three months. Like CERN, they use the word coordinator to describe a management role. But outliers can also be in the private sector. Google's an interesting case in point. Uh, right now, I think we could s probably agree that Google is being sucked into the mainstream. But wind the clock back five years. Google was a company that uh, was essentially founded by a bunch of graduate students, people who felt that they'd never left university, people who enjoyed the cut and thrust of academic stimulation. Uh, they'd created this really clever algorithm. They'd created lots of spin-off products that went with that, if you like. Uh, and they didn't bother with any rules or any policies that create a very fertile environment for creative and innovative thinking. Because the super goals of outliers are generally so dominant, innovation is pervasive. CERN invented the World Wide Web to solve its problem of data access to its experiments by the world's physicists. Its latest experiments are driving the next generation of computing, the grid or cloud computing, to new levels of efficiency. Without the worldwide computing, the grid computing, this result today would not have been possible either. The culture, the way that things are done around here, is one of the turning, defining qualities of an outlier. One of the, the biggest drawbacks of most of traditional companies is that they are so intolerant of failure because you know, they are concerned about due process, they're concerned about hierarchical authority, and if you play that through, Inevitably, what that means is people are, f are afraid of taking a risk. Uh, there's, there's a story, uh, my friend uh, uh, Larry Prusak, uh, something of a, a knowledge expert, uh, used to, he asked some member of the IBM board how it had been that such a great information company as IBM had seemingly been uh, caught blindsided by the changes in the computer market. And, uh, and there, to which the response is, at the board level, we didn't really know it was happening. To which says, Laurie says, he replied, you didn't know it was happening? My dog knew it was happening. One of the challenges is to identify how qualities of outlier organizations might carry across to more conventional businesses. 
The capacity for problem solving in aid agencies and at CERN is a core quality. But is there evidence that this is transferable to a different culture in industry? A particular strand of, shall we say, good practice from an outlier company dropped into a very traditional structure uh, ends up being killed off because it just doesn't fit. So what you've got to do is to say not, can we take this one clever practice, let's say it's around you know, celebrating mistakes, can we take this one practice and drop it into our organisation? No, we can't. What we can do is take the, the principle behind that, the concept that we should be finding ways to be more tolerant of failure. And can we take that principle and then say to ourselves, are there ways of making use of that principle within our existing systems and structures? Another characteristic of outliers, also shared by Médecins Sans Frontières and CERN, is that they seem to have a role in training for needs beyond their own immediate requirements. We are essentially a main source of training. We are training hundreds, thousands over the year of people uh, to have a mentality of problem solving, a mentality of uh, cooperative and competitive work. And so we are giving these people back. Uh, most, more than half of the, the people trained through CERN are not staying in research, they are going back. One interesting quality that I've seen in many, many different types of outliers is, is what you're saying, which is that we have people with, with deep expertise but with, with breadth as well. We sometimes call them T-shaped people. They've got, they can drill right down on the details of an issue, but they have enough breadth of understanding that they can essentially kind of reach out to those from different disciplines. The light touch management of the CERN experiments allowed the latest discovery of the Higgs particle to happen in record time, with thousands of physicists across the world all driven by the same will to find this elusive piece of nature's jigsaw. I think their approach to doing it is distinctive. I think a lot of other people are trying to be agile and I think um, new forms of organising and of organisation and collaboration are emerging which, which have some of this. At the 2013 Special SMS Conference, we'll explore further how an outlier such as CERN can inform the workings of other organisations who may yearn for some of the outcomes of successful outliers. So the conference is all about learning from outliers. It's all about bringing together academics, business people, consultants uh, to the you know, shores of Lake Geneva for three or four days to debate these issues, to try to bring some really rich case studies of companies, organisations like CERN to the table so that we can discuss what makes them special, what makes them different. I'm Bettina Brüchel, Professor of Strategy and Organization at IMD, and I have the pleasure of sharing with you some of the activities planned for the Lake Geneva Conference next year, which builds really on this conference very nicely. One of the unique features about that conference will be an attempt to build the bridge between theory and practice. We have a wide range of practitioners which will be joining at that conference, and we'll have one particular session where we'll have the two practitioners, academics, and in fact a few consultants in ex exchange, interactively engaging in a discussion. So maybe you'll always get to ask the questions you've always wanted to ask. So welcome to the conference. <laughs>